Little fish don't splash like that. And they don't stay down like this. So when he came up there, what's it say out there, man? About You're 47. 50. Okay. We're only getting okay. about a foot of crank. I'm going to so bump. Step I'm back there where Wes is. Just take a step back. Let me get under you. I'll just go underneath. You tell me what the counter says. 37. Okay. I'm gonna turn him into you a little. Just let it. When he head shakes like that, just keep reeling, okay? okay. Don't try to pull the rod back or anything. All just right. keep on reeling. Thirty feet. Well, watch my hand, bro. I don't want to hit you in the eye. Thirty feet. Oh, there he is. Beautiful oh. fish. Beautiful oh, fish. Oh yeah, I see him. Oh yeah. Oh, he's a nice rod one. Tip you gotta see right that. Here. You gotta see that. Rod tip Sorry, right guys. Here. Okay. Oh, he's good looking he's fish. A big ass. Good fish. Good. 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 You're doing it. Comes over here, over on you, but you're perfect. Right over my head. Right over the shoulder. Just keep bringing him in. Don't lift your rod tip, okay? I'm not. I'm just gonna you know you're doing great. Just don't don't lift Whoa, there. Oh, we got some action here. Yeah, you don't like the boat, guys. This is why we troll flies. If there was any question about it. Good. Good. You're gonna get a shot at him here. Just keep on reeling. Don't lift, okay? Not lifting. You're doing fantastic. You guys are veterans at this. That's a hey. big freaking rainbow there. there you okay, go. reel, get reel, 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 reel. Go over my head. Oh yeah, you got it. Holy shit. That's it, boys. Oh, that right. is it. Woo! Fantastic. Woo! Oh, shit. That's, that's ten, pounds. Easy. ten pounds easy. Yeah, ten pounds on, easy. Pull, pull line off. Pull line off. Fuck. Big, beautiful rainbows that's what trolling flies can do you think trolling flies don't work well think again you need to grab a set of my trolling flies get out on the water and get ready to go big <laughs> yes hey guys Kel Kellogg here um you know periodically on the channel I like to talk about the lures that I've been using for the past several months what's been you know successful for me um, the viewers seem to enjoy those videos I always get a lot of requests for you know what are you pulling what are you using so we are right at the end of May the year is getting towards half over it's gonna be June very soon um, and I have fished a great deal this year not a lot of time on the kayak although I'm starting to kayak fish now I spent a ton of time guiding and before that I spent a lot of time on the FHS pontoon boat, you know, getting ready to guide. And I did some kayak trips in early winter too. So top three offerings, hands down, no comparison to anything else. Let's start off with big fish offerings, okay? Number one, big fish lure this spring, hands down, have been trolling flies. Both bait fish patterns like that and bright, crazy stuff like this creature fly right here. Um, They've all been producing. We caught fish up to 11 pounds on flies this spring. Um, we caught multiple fish, you know, over six pounds in, you know, in that range between six and nine pounds. Um, we caught a ton of those fish. We caught them early in the morning, late in the day, midday. It didn't seem to matter. Wes and I both had a fly in the water almost all the time because they were producing so many big fish. Why do flies produce big fish? I don't know, the trout don't answer my questions, but my theory is, is they see flies less than they see almost any other kind of lure. I talked to a lot of guys, I talked to a lot of guys this spring, I was out in the water every single day for almost three months, and uh, very few guys even had flies on their boats, I gave away a lot of flies, and guys that had flies, they carry them around in their tackle box and they don't often use them. I very much encourage you to give flies a try, fish them with confidence, and you're gonna find just what we found. They flat out produce fish and they produce big fish. They just have an uncanny way of fooling big trout. Enough said about the flies. I'm gonna set these right over here. Get those out of our life for now. Number two offering. And this isn't necessarily in, in order of effectiveness. These are probably tied with my number three offering. But number two offering, 
was spoons. Medium sized spoons like trigger spoons right there and smaller spoons like trigger spoon juniors and micro trigger spoons. Those worked well. You know, spoons are simple to fish. You put them in the water, often run them naked, they flat out fish and we caught a lot of fish on spoons. You know, we were fishing shad lakes, we were fishing lakes that had bait fish in them. So it's a, it's a great imitation of an injured bait fish. They sparked the fish's curiosity. They put out a lot of vibration. They put out a lot of flash and uh, spoons didn't work every day, but very often we, we found ourselves catching, you know, several fish on spoons. We never got a really big bruiser on a spoon. I think our top spoon fish, you know, this spring was about four pounds, but they definitely produce numbers of fish. So let's talk numbers. Numbers of fish across the board, whether we're talking about tiny fish, medium sized fish, two pounders, four pounders, and even some big fish, worms, worms, worms. Worms produce when the bite is good. Worms produce when the bite is bad. Worms produce on rainy days, sunny days, windy days. It's a bait that you can rely on to put fish in the boat regardless of the conditions. Some days you're out there, you're fishing, you're trying to save the day because the fish aren't biting, put on a worm. And we fish worms many different ways. Um, sometimes we fished them naked, all right? Just a worm on a leader, slow death hook. The worm is rolling. It's very important that the worm rolls. If your worm's not rolling, give it a little tweak. You want that worm rolling through the water. Some days, that was the best offering. Many, many days, probably our number one offering with a worm was adding a mini willow leaf dodger like that anywhere from 24 to 36 inches above the worm. The worm's still rolling back there, but that dodger is doing just enough in terms of flash and vibration to bring fish in. They see the worm, they sample the worm, and the next thing you know, they're swimming around in the fish box. Um, at other times, and, and these don't seem to work at the same time a lot of days. Um, if we couldn't get them to go on the willow leaf, the mini willow leaf, um, we would toss on, this is, this is actually a double set here. We would toss on the turbo flashers. And it was really interesting. Days that they hit the turbos, they tended not to respond very well to the willow and just the opposite was true if we were smoking them on the willow and we put on the turbos a lot of times they weren't responsive to that of course there were days when they hit both and there were also days when all of a sudden the bite shut down with the willow we put on the turbo and started catching fish again so you know fishing they will drive you insane oftentimes and this is another thing that was just reinforced time after time after time this spring many times small changes greatly altered our results and uh, one of the conclusions we came to after you know almost three solid months on the water was that anglers tend to make changes that are too radical okay they're not catching fish at 15 feet so they'll drop down to 30. they're not catching fish on spoons so they'll they'll put on a nine inch rapala we found that depth changes uh, as subtle as two to three feet often netted better results. We found that changing from a willow to a naked worm to a worm and turbo throughout the day made for drastic changes and the bite was changing all the time. We were fishing three and four rods most of the time out of the patio boat. So maybe we were getting fish on naked worms, that bite shut down. We had the luxury of pulling one rod, throwing on a willow and right away, boom, 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 hookups on that rod, well, then we started switching it out. When we saw that bite kind of fade, if we saw the marks moving, we would mess with depth a little bit, but we might try a turbo, we might go back to naked. Those little changes often netted us very stark results. We would go from zero to hero and back to zero again very quickly, and we just kept making those subtle tweaks throughout the day kept on catching fish. I think there were only four days this spring when we didn't get limits of trout for our anglers, which is uh, not only surprising, but it's pretty impressive. We didn't think we were gonna get that many limits. We knew we were gonna get our shots. We knew we were gonna get big fish. But uh, you know, we, we just, we just, we were good trout fishermen when we started guiding and all that time on the water has done, done nothing but hone our skills. And we are very happy to pass that information on to you guys out there in YouTube world. So. To recap, big fish, 
you want a fly in the water all the time, play with other offerings on your second rod. Tough bite, day-to-day, day-to-day fish producer, the, the offering that put fish in the box, a dirty night crawler, sometimes a gulp worm, mostly a dirty night crawler, sometimes teamed with blades, sometimes run naked, sometimes teamed with turbos, sometimes teamed with the, with the micro mini turbos, but the bottom line is worms. And finally, spoons wobbling spoons, medium size, small size. That's what has done it for us so far this year. Um, we're turning our attention to the high Sierras. That's gonna change things up. I'll be back here in a month or two and tell you how it's going up there and kind of give a lure recap of what we're using up there. It's gonna be a unique year. Um, we're gonna have lower water levels and that tends to make the fishing very good because it concentrates the fish, but it also concentrates the nutrients. And I've seen this at Stampede Reservoir in drought years. We tend to lose water clarity when the, when the lake levels you know, go down because the bait fish are concentrated, the trout are concentrated, but also that plankton or you know whatever, whatever you call that protoplasmic mix that's in the water, that stuff is concentrated too. And when that stuff concentrates, you lose water clarity and that can definitely change up, you know, lure color, the amount of vibration you need to throw at the fish, the amount of flash you need to throw at the fish. It's almost like fishing muddy conditions in the spring. You lose clarity, you gotta tweak your approach a little bit. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I'm gonna jump for now. I wanna thank you guys for all the support you've given the store, you've given the channel, all that. We love you guys. If you're looking for gear, any of the stuff I just talked about, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com, check out my store. We have a very hard hitting selection of trout and landlocked salmon lures. It's expanding all the time. You'll find everything there that you see me fishing out on the water and we offer it up at great prices. Um, beyond that, if you haven't subscribed, please take a second to hit that subscribe button. We would really appreciate that. And that way you'll always know when I'm on here talking fishing. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there and have a wonderful day.